everyone, welcome to 996 The Howl for the uninitiated. This is an unedited YouTube vlog discussing everything Arizona Coyotes and they're 5 2 and 1. It's unbelievable. The team is on fire, firing on all cylinders. They're a good team, they're in the playoff spot. They got three wins above their regulation losses, five and two, like I said. They're on a four game win streak. There's nothing really, there's no reason not to be optimistic and happy about this team. I'm really excited and I'm thankful for the team, for the uh, for the regular season that they've had so far in, in this early going. And uh, I'm happy, I'm happy that, you know, whatever we expected is coming true and we're not hoping for things anymore you know i remember days where we would hope for someone like christian dvorak to be a consistent 20 goal scorer or schmaltz to light it up consistently or you know having these prospects like fisher or kraus to be consistent goal scorers or someone like perlini strom duclair or domi you know we we're always hoping for those players um going back to those list of players Fisher and Kraus yes I, they haven't really produced as much lately uh, Kraus has two goals Fisher still looking for his first one but they look like a force out there they look NHL ready and then uh, we're not hoping for Dvorak anymore he's scoring goals in bunches he's scoring highlight reel goals he loves shooting the puck his shot is accurate it's always beautiful when he scores and uh, I was really hard on him in the offseason. You know, he had to have been this offensive guy who could handle second line duties, who can be an offensive guy that we can look towards to get points. And that's all ringing true for him. He's really having a great start to the season. Him and Schmaltz have great chemistry and Garland. But uh, more, more, more distinctly, him and Schmaltz are confident with the puck. They're entering the zone with confidence. They want the puck. They want to control the puck. I'm seeing that a lot with Schmaltz and Dvorak. And it's really great to see. It's great to have a second line. Not only a top line, but the team also has a second line. And, you know, these past two games against Ottawa and New York, both victories, a 5-2 win in Ottawa, 3-2 overtime win against the Rangers. Um just games that the counties should have won i mean they absolutely should have beaten ottawa new york's kind of like i really don't know what to make of them yet if they're tanking or they're just a struggling 500 team but it's good that you know for a team below them in the standings they're able to get the two points doesn't matter it was in overtime they're an eastern team you can give them that freebie point but just to come out in the first period and dominate in someone's own arena like that the coyotes did that um, it's funny to see. I mean, usually it's the other way around. And, you know, it's like it's a given that the Coyotes would get ran, um, given the run around in the first period at home. But uh, getting 23 shots in the first period, a couple quality chances, uh, Kraus getting a goal, just coming out, playing their game with confidence on an Eastern road trip, which rarely happens with this team. It, it was great. Um, in the second period, they kind of faltered a bit, I would say, much like the third period against Ottawa, where they kind of let their foot off the gas, and Ottawa came back and scored two goals. But uh, that's all they could have. That's all they could have done. They couldn't um, shorten that lead the Coyotes made that four nothing lead. The Coyotes made themselves. Ottawa couldn't, you know, shrink it further from four two. But against the Rangers. You know, one nothing it was a close game the whole game, even though the Coyotes outshot them tremendously. I think the Rangers goalie Georgiev was really good, stunned in his head, stopped a lot of high-quality chances. Kemper wasn't tested much, and the Coyotes were giving the Rangers nothing, to be honest. I think Zabinijad had one good chance, and Panarin had one good chance, but other than that, I didn't hear their names, and they didn't have good looks. Capo Caco... Had a great power play. Uh, he had one assist, I think, on the night. But that's pretty much it. The Coyotes are shutting down top NHL players. We saw this with Colorado, where McKinnon and Rantanen were quiet. Against Boston, they only scored one goal. Most recently, uh, Winnipeg's first line did some damage. But Nashville, you know, their top players really didn't perform at levels that they usually perform at so Cowboys are good at shutting down top level players 
and they got their own scoring to boot. Their power play is clicking ever since the Winnipeg game. It's been consistent. They scored a power play goal in, I think, each of the last four games on this winning streak. Uh, moving Schmaltz to the second power play unit and adding Dvorak to the first power play unit and just getting that confidence in the power play has really uh, been a recipe for success for them and I hope it keeps going. Um, all lines are pretty much good. I feel like the Grabner, Hinnestros and Richardson line is a bit snake bitten, but they're playing a type of shutdown, um, simplistic hockey that the Coyotes were running all of last season with all the injuries. So if you want to see how the team performs between compared from this year to last year, just, just look at that Richardson line. Um, they dump and chase. They grind it out. Not really offensive. Like I said, they're snake bit in a bit, but the other three lines are playing just offensive hockey and uh, shooting the puck more and getting more offensive zone time. I love the Krause, Fisher, and Soderberg line. They're so heavy, and they're just three power forwards who shoot the puck well and just use their bodies to gain puck advantage and puck position. I really love that line, but what that means is that where does Hayden, Barrett Hayden, fall into all this? He's been scratched the last three games, I think, three or four games. Uh, after that Colorado game, he didn't he didn't play another game, I believe, but I don't know where you fit him. I don't know who you take out of the lineup to put Hayden in. He's sitting in the press box. He's a skilled guy, so you could only play him on the top two lines or the third line, but... Even then, I wouldn't want him on the third line with Soderberg, Kraus, or Fisher, one of those guys. I feel like Kenneth Strozo is probably our weakest forward that's playing right now. But, I mean, he's still getting assists. He's still trying his hardest out there. It's not like he's lazy. It's just that out of all the forwards, I think, you know, he's probably one of the weakest wingers that Hayden, Hayden could replace. Um, wouldn't want to replace Brad Richardson. He's a fourth-line centerman, good at face-offs, and a good penalty killer, which the team needs in their lineup. So I don't know. I guess Hayden's just going to sit around maybe until an injury pops up. But I really don't know what Talkit is going to do with Hayden. I mean, no players are really giving a, an excuse for Talkit to scratch themselves. Um, Garland is, has three goals and he's playing really well. Fisher looks like he's improving each game. He's a bit snake bitten and scoring goals. But uh, he he's noticeable and he's generating offense. And Kraus is scoring. Soderberg is scoring, so not really sure what happens with Hayden, but uh, hopefully it's not a bad thing. Hopefully Taka, Chaika, and Hayden all understand the page they're on, and there's no miscommunication, and they're just uh, just making smart decisions with Hayden. That's all I hope for. Um, defensively, team's good. Capo Bianco is having some strong games. Labushkin. You know, a bit questionable, but he's a 7th D-man who's playing a 6th D-man spot. So, I, I, I'm forgiven on him. Goligoski scored. He's got 6 points in 8 games. OEL and Demers are steady. OEL got his first goal against Ottawa, which was in the crease. It was so funny to see uh, Oliver score uh, a goal so close to the net. But uh, other than that, I'm happy for the team. They're 5-2-1. and one. They're producing. They're performing well. Nothing to complain about. Goaltending is A+. Plus. Everything's A+. Plus. Even the power play nowadays. So they got the Islanders and New Jersey and Buffalo. And then they'll, they'll be back home. So they still got a, a lot of work ahead on this Eastern road trip. And we'll see what happens. That's it for me. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your support.